in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When have you started putting your Christmas lights up? I've put mine up and we'll turn them on today. <coughs> you can see some of them behind me. And I've got the feeling this year that people have started thinking about Christmas a lot sooner and a lot of people have started putting their lights up earlier and I'm starting to think that actually there's a really good reason for that. Advent, which starts today, is about preparation for Christmas and normally the Christmas preparations are all fraught with oh we've got to do so much shopping we've got to do this we've got to do that how are we going to cope with all these people coming for lunch on Christmas Day and all of that sort of stuff but this year it's different the preparations are what is it safe to do because this year how we celebrate Christmas is quite literally a matter of life and death so our preparations take on a more serious note and it's on that serious note that I want to reflect a little bit about why we put up these little lights and things. When I was uh, a student I was um, for a year uh, living and working in Jerusalem uh, and that meant of course I spent Christmas in Jerusalem and Jerusalem part of the modern Israeli state uh, Christmas doesn't really happen. Um, there's not a lot going on. Uh, go down the road to Bethlehem, there's lots going on there. But Jerusalem, it's actually quite an ordinary day. And I really missed all the Christmas tat and all that. So I'm a big fan of lots of little fairy lights and stuff. Uh, and we've certainly bought extra this year. <coughs> but that buying extra is for a very serious reason. It feels like we're in a dark tunnel. It feels like that, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel but it's a long way off. And here in the dark, in the middle of winter, we need something to get us through. And that hope for Christmas is part of that. There's a, I think there's a very good reason why the government has, is going to relax the restrictions for five days over Christmas. Not because they're being reckless, but because they realise just how much people need something to hang on to. The idea of little lights in the darkness sort of underlies today's readings. I mean, not, not obviously. Um, but if you think about the, the circumstances of those three readings, uh, you'll get some idea what I mean. So the first reading from Isaiah, it's Isaiah 64, right near the back end of the book, is it's an anonymous poem from much later on in Old Testament history. At a time when the big upheavals of the past have all gone away. There's a new world order, it's the Persian world order if you like. And the people in Israel were a minority group. They had their temple, they had their capital, they were part of a province in the, in the Persian Empire. And it just didn't really feel very great. And so they're looking to God for some sense of purpose and hope. They realise what God has done in the past. They realise they got things wrong and they, they followed the interpretation of their forefathers, uh, their forebears, who were saying, well, it's because we sinned that all these bad things happened. And they realise that. And they've understood more about God now, that God is the great God who made everything um, and not just a little tin pot national God that they used to believe in. But they're looking to that God and they're saying, you made us, you love us, aren't you going to look after us? And oh, it doesn't sound very positive, but the fact that they're actually making that prayer to God, and that's what it is, this chapter is a prayer, they're making that prayer in the hope that you are our Father. Surely you're not going to cast us off. 
cycle forward to Paul uh, and the letter to the Corinthians uh, and he's effectively saying to them look you know we hope that Jesus will come back that there'll be the day of the Jesus Christ and and that's again a hope to a group of people who <sighs> Corinth was very much like Reading um, multicultural uh, lots and lots of commerce going on uh, and and it can feel as though you're very very small uh, in that sort of environment um, when you have a complex society no one person uh, has a huge effect on the people around them and so he's trying to give them some sense of yeah yeah you may be part of a big complex society but actually you know Jesus loves you and he's there for you and you matter and then Finally, the, the third reading, which is Jesus. This is called the Little Apocalypse. Uh, and in this reading, Jesus basically predicts the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which indeed happened. Um, uh, but he wasn't the first person to predict it, and there have been many prophets before him who did. But that sense of looking for some sort of decisive action, we had this in the, 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 over the last couple of weeks, it, it means that um, we have this hope God is, is, is there and it may be just a small hope that's the thing a small hope that God is going to act which brings me back to all of these situations can feel like being in the dark and, and it's, a, it's a truism to say that a little light shows up more when it's surrounded by darkness which is why you get to the all fairy lights and things when we have our Christmas lights on we are symbolically saying the world may be dark but we have the light of hope in our hearts so as we get ready for Christmas and we put up our lights we put up our trees we write our cards and all the rest of it what we're doing is we're saying these things give us hope now going back to our Christmas preparations I said that people have started putting things up early more importantly I think people have started to plan how they're going to do Christmas and I wonder if you have as well we certainly have and although our Christmas services this year are going to be slightly different so we're going to have to be Covid compliant and, and you're going to have to book um, your, your places on Eventbrite you'll get more about that in the next week or so um, that's something that, that, that shows that even in the midst of you know, a really nasty time as human beings, we're working it through in order to give each other hope. And Christmas is really about that earthy human being together, <clears throat> that, that sense of being people who care for each other because God cares for us. So I hope that however you are planning your Christmas, that you are planning something that is filled with hope, that is very, very kind to the people about you, that is looking to a time when all humanity can live calmly and at peace it's peace and joy and all that um, we we, tr we we really really try when the going gets tough to, to to actually make these things real so I'm hoping that our preparations this week this this year will actually mean more that the lights we put up will symbolize a much deeper hope that the things that we do may be scaled down you know it's only three families together maybe scaled down but it'll be that much sweeter we'll be caring for each other with a lot more conscious awareness that that the world needs people to stick together so enjoy your preparations for christmas and i do hope that as we go through December um, we'll be able to look after each other. Amen.